Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here. Welcome back to Tesla Daily. Today we are going to be talking about some interesting new comments from Tesla's former director of artificial intelligence, Andre Karpathy. He shares more about his time at Tesla, some of his thoughts on where Tesla is at right now, and if you might have any interest in rejoining Tesla someday. We'll also take a look at a production update from Tesla on Giga Texas and a couple other items as well. Quick look at the stock, Tesla today starting off the week with a small outperformance, the Nasdaq down 1%, Tesla down just 4 tenths of a percent, closing at $227.54. Of course, not really too important as this week is probably going to be mostly determined by the Federal Open Market Committee meeting and the results of that on Wednesday. We'll get the next interest rate decision and probably most importantly, new commentary that will shape expectations for where interest rates go and how quickly from here. All right, first up today, I want to talk about an interview of Tesla's former director of AI, Andre Karpathy, by Lex Friedman. This is on Lex's channel. I'll post a link to that in the description. It's about a three and a half hour long conversation. And although Andre is, of course, no longer at Tesla, I thought it was a very informative conversation for his time there, where Tesla's at today, the decision to leave Tesla, and even whether or not he might come back someday down the line. So I'll put a link to this in the description. It's really interesting. It's about three and a half hour conversation, so carve out some time. But I'll cover here the most relevant parts to Tesla, of course, a lot of other interesting conversation, a lot of time on the formation of intelligent life, aliens, the future of intelligence, all that good stuff that Lex often spends time talking with his guests about. More of the Tesla type stuff probably starts a little over an hour into the podcast. So I think for Andre, probably the most common questions that come to mind for people would be, hey, why'd you leave Tesla? And does that reflect poorly on Tesla's possible progress with autonomous driving? If they were so close to solving it, why not stick around? So Andre's talked a little bit about that on Twitter, but both those questions here going a little bit more in depth on. For the subject of leaving Tesla, he talked about the five years that he's been there. It's really become more of a managerial role over time. When he started, there were just two people sitting at desks training neural networks. Tesla at that time was still working with Mobileye. So over those years, Andre's really overseen the development and growth of a robust deep learning team from that more technical type of role that he was originally serving at Tesla. So he said, while he does feel like he can handle those managerial responsibilities, he just really was looking to get back to more technical work, learning and teaching, focusing a little bit more on AGI, he mentioned, so artificial general intelligence. We've seen him on Twitter talk a lot about GPT-3 and language models and things like that. So more time to be immersed in those things rather than all the responsibilities that come alongside leading a team. We've heard Andre talk about operation and vacation before, kind of the goal of getting things to a place where The progress is happening naturally, and maybe there's no human intervention needed at all. Not to say that Tesla is there already, but Andre was definitely expressing the idea that the FSD team is now at an amazing place and is operating autonomously, not meaning without humans being involved, but meaning without needing a lot of managerial oversight to kind of guide where things are headed, feeling like they're just on a good track right now. Something he mentioned a couple of different times in a couple of different ways, intimating that essentially what needs to be done is known. And what's left to be done is to execute on that path that's been late. Speaking a bit on that path, Andre shared a lot of his thoughts on where Tesla is at right now, particularly in regard to sensors. So we talked about vision being the sensor that humans use for driving. So everything is really built around that. Side note, that's analogous to what we've talked about before with Optimus or the Tesla bot being built around human infrastructure and the versatility that that form factor allows for in that infrastructure. Andre actually emphasized that later on when talking about the bot as well. Anyway, no surprise there, even being removed from Tesla, Andre is still obviously very supportive of the vision-only approach, and he actually went into even more detail than maybe what you would expect from someone just in the AI department, and this really shows the cross-functional nature that is instilled in Tesla. It's a very Elon-esque answer here. He said that it's not really talked about, but sensors are a potential liability. Every sensor that is added creates bloat, not just in software, but in the supply chain, in manufacturing, etc., He said additional sensors contribute noise across all of those disciplines. They create entropy. They drive more version branches that need to be managed as one sensor might need to be updated to a new part. And then you've got to track those version numbers that persists for a decade plus. And he also mentioned the idea that is too frequently left out of conversations like this. And that is opportunity cost. If engineers and developers are spending their time working on developing something for radar or for LIDAR or for sensor fusion, etc., That effort, those man hours, are not being spent on furthering progress in vision, which Tesla ultimately feels like is necessary anyway. Andre seemed to have very similar feelings about HD or centimeter level mapping. He said it was crazy. Humans don't need it. Low res maps are enough. He said it's not scalable. It's a crutch and a distraction. So when he's saying things like that, that all applies directly to companies like Waymo and Cruise. 
Andre's not the type that's just going to go out there and say that directly about those companies, but look at what he's saying here about centrifusion, about HD mapping, about geofencing. These are the things that those companies are doing that Andre is just not mincing any words about, that not being the correct solution in his view. He later mentioned a concept that I think applies perfectly here. He talked about when thinking about an organization and how an organization is constructed or how resources are deployed. Oftentimes, there might be an opportunity to make an investment that, let's say, costs something like two times the amount of the current investment, whether that's time or money or whatever resource you're talking about. And from that two times amount invested, you get maybe a 10% improvement on whatever the product or service is. So with that kind of thinking, it might follow that to make something 10 times better, you're talking about having to spend 100 times the amount of resources to do that following that linear trajectory. But that's not how things work in reality. Because if your end target is that 10x goal rather than that 10% goal, you're going to fundamentally restructure how you're pursuing that target. Maybe that then takes a little bit longer, takes more resources than getting that 10% gain following a different course of action, but ultimately clearly ends up being the right choice if that target can be achieved. So relying on things like radar or LIDAR or HD maps, those might fall into that 10% incremental improvement whether that's in terms of the capability of the system itself or where it can be utilized or things like that, those things start to look like they can fall pretty easily into that path of just trying to incrementally improve and show some progress rather than actually fundamentally solving the problem like the 10x path would lay out. Ultimately, that's kind of just a hypothetical example about how first principles thinking can lead to such dramatic disruption. I also think it accompanies well a question that I get a lot about why I'm critical of plug-in hybrid EVs and it's very similar. I think the plug-in hybrids fall into that 10% incremental improvement type of category when it's obvious that there's just a fundamental restructuring that needs to happen to pursue EVs. Once that fundamental restructuring becomes clear, whether that's hybrids or LiDAR, radar, HD mapping, whatever, then it just stops making sense to invest in those expensive incremental improvements. So Andre feels like that path is clear. He said that at this point, autonomy feels tractable. Tesla is on track to solve that. He doesn't know when that's going to be because it's never happened before, but that he has seen massive progress in the five years that he's been at Tesla and seeing things under the hood, he feels really good about it, and that in his view, the remaining problems are not changing the philosophy that Tesla is pursuing. So very insightful part of the conversation there. Lex also asked about his relationship with Elon and the effect that Elon has had on him, things that he's learned. And he said probably the biggest thing is how to create an efficient organization and how to fight entropy throughout an organization. He said he feels like it requires someone in a position of power that's really intelligent and can wield a quote-unquote big hammer when necessary. Otherwise, things just devolve into bureaucracy and constant battles between stakeholders fighting for their own agendas. I think many of you know that I agree with that, and oftentimes I think that's what leaves the door open for disruption because startups or early-stage companies are more frequently operated in that way. Finally, from Andre, as for a possible return to Tesla, he did say he'd be open to returning to Tesla in the future. He said he loves the company a lot. He loves Elon. He loves the team. He said, quote, I would actually be potentially interested in revisiting it, maybe coming back at some point, working on Optimus, working on AGI at Tesla. I think Tesla is going to do incredible things. It's basically a massive scale robotics company with a lot of in-house talent for doing really incredible things. I think humanoid robots are going to be amazing. I think autonomous transportation is going to be amazing. All this is happening at Tesla, end quote. So he said he is happy to potentially at some point come back for Act 2. Elon Musk on Twitter, in response to this, said that Andre will always be welcome at Tesla. I definitely hope that we do get a chance to see that someday, and maybe this period of time can make that even better as Andre has time to refocus in on some things that maybe he wouldn't have had time for otherwise. All right, let's move on to an update on Giga Texas. Pretty exciting one here, shared by Tesla on Twitter, that they have now completed 20,000 Model Ys produced at Giga Texas. This was yesterday, so October 30th. You may remember that back on September 17th, so 44 days ago, Tesla tweeted that they had crossed 10,000 vehicles produced at Giga Texas. That means that over the last month and a half, Tesla has averaged 227 Model Ys produced per day, or just under 1,600 Model Ys produced per week. Now, of course, that would have ramped up over the last few weeks, so we should get even better weekly production through November and December out of Texas. This number tells us that for October, the number was probably somewhere around 8,000 vehicles. So even if no further ramp up happens, we should be pretty easily clearing 25,000 vehicles produced at Texas for Q4. But of course, Tesla does intend to ramp up to 5,000 vehicles per week for Berlin and Texas by the end of the year. So if Tesla can stay on that ramp trajectory, should be exceeding that by a fairly decent amount. 
As for my forecast, I think I last had about 27,000 vehicles for Q4 for Texas. So this is probably even a little bit ahead of what my forecast is which is extremely exciting both for Q4, but even more for next year if Tesla can get Berlin and Texas ramped up, which we really seem to be seeing them hit their stride now, then estimates are just gonna have to come up for 2023. So very excited about this progress for Giga Texas. Also got another update out of Texas here, this time for San Antonio, similar to what we just heard in the Midwest, I think near St. Louis. Tesla is now leasing a 440,000 square foot warehouse in San Antonio, according to the San Antonio Business Journal covered here by Drive Tesla Canada, apparently for storage for manufacturing components. Finally, last couple of things here. It looks like today Tesla is rolling out a minor FSD update. I don't think we're getting 10.69.3 here, but as I'm recording it, downloading 2022.20.19, which is apparently FSD beta version 10.69.2.4. So I don't know when we're getting .3 supposed to be two weeks ago than last week, and I don't think we've heard anything from Elon since then, but of course, a lot going on with Twitter right now. Speaking of Twitter, kind of a funny story there, GM has decided to temporarily suspend their advertising on Twitter as they wait to see what's going on with Twitter management. Kind of funny that a lot of people looked at it as an opportunity for Tesla to get free advertising, which by the way, that's not really how it works. Tesla would still have to pay for advertising. The companies have different stakeholders. Obviously, Elon could help facilitate that. Maybe there could be some deal that's worked out, but it would still have to be a transaction of some sort. Anyway, even before anything with that transpires, it seems like the first action here would be GM actually deciding to no longer advertise on Twitter as one of the factors at play. Also on Twitter, Elon has now fired the entire board of directors of Twitter and is now the sole director. Quick Tesla Semi update here, and I do mean quick in this case, a video shared by Zangler on Twitter of the Tesla Semi going through a roundabout and clearly accelerating much quicker than a normal Semi would be with a trailer in tow. We don't know necessarily if that trailer is full, but definitely fun to see these zooming about and hopefully having less of an impact on traffic flow. Finally then, an update from George Hotz, the founder of Kama AI. He has announced that he is going to be taking some time away from Kama. A little bit of a weird blog post. I think it tried to instill confidence in Kama still with him leaving, but I'm not sure it really quite hit the mark on that, at least to me. So of course, Kama working on driver assistance systems and potentially autonomy. So interesting news, especially so close to the Argo AI news that we had talked about last week. All right, that's where we'll leave it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, November 1st episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.